So a few of you reached out to me on Discord this week and asked me to help you some more with Archicad 24. So that's exactly what we're doing here today. What's going on guys, my name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about ArcCAD 24 and how we can utilize a very simple inspirational image, this one in particular, and creating it and replicating it in ArcCAD 24. Now the image I've selected has come through from one of you guys on the Discord private message chat. There's a link down below if you want to join the Discord chat. There's a few members on there, we're slowly growing it, it's slowly getting more and more popular. And hopefully we'll build a little community there where all architects and designers can collaborate and help create better designs together in one unique space. Anyway, I wanted to show you exactly how to create this model in ArcCAD 24 and then take it over to Twin Motion and render it out in less than 30 minutes. Now, that's always the goal. We try to smash out a tutorial like this in 30 minutes. Hopefully we get that in that time frame. If we do it even quicker, fantastic. If we take a little bit longer, that's okay. Hopefully you learn lots in the process. Anyway, enough of my face. Let's turn around to these screens and get started with today's tutorial. All right, so we've got our inspiration image open on the left screen here and we've got our CAD 24 being recorded on the right screen. I'm going back to this two panel system here, which probably gonna turn into a three panel system to keep this image in its screen the whole video so you guys can see how we're thinking through it and how we're replicating it. Let me know if you do like this system more so or if you'd still prefer the floating head down below. I'm trying to make these videos a lot more interactive and a lot more engaging with you all. So that's why I'm thinking that this two panel system works pretty well, but so far the comments have been floating head. I'm gonna test it for a little bit and if it is still floating head at the end of the day, well, we're going back the traditional floating head system. I chose this image here sent through by one of you guys on the Discord chat for the very simple reason that it features a number of different elements that we really need to work through. So as you can see, we have very thick walls that aren't traditionally stored in our CAD 24 from the get-go. We have steps, we have a timber feature screen, we have PFC members running behind, we have garden beds. On the right, we have a pond, we have the street, we have curbing, we have all sorts of elements. So I wanted to start with the foundations and start where we start with most videos, and that's by clicking Control-7. So Control-7 will open up your story settings, it lets you enable all the different heights in the building in the project that you have going. For me, I always like to insert a story below and call it footings. In this instance, I'm actually gonna lower it by 600 instead of by our usual 172, which is the typical slab thickness, including a footing. I'm going for 600 here because I'm basically gauging it off a three-step system and the actual soil for the tree as well. So a tree of that size would need about a meter of deep soil to be able to grow and have the root systems function properly. Um, I'm not a landscape architect, I'm a regular architect, but that's just my experience with trees. It would depend on the different species, of course, but we're just going generic at the moment. It is sitting inside the ground as well, so 600 is just additional soil and then you have natural ground level below. But we're calling our footings 600 mil in this instance and we're probably gonna go and call our ground floor the top of that blade wall on the right hand side, which looking at it, the man's probably about 1.8 and you can probably fit three, if not four of him on the side. So let's call the top of our ground floor six meters. I don't know what's happening behind. I'm not gonna worry about what's happening behind. We're just focusing on the main inspiration image. So let's click OK and our story settings have been set up. I'm gonna start by creating a generic mesh of the overall site so we know what we're really working with. I think it's a relatively small site. We're probably not talking any bigger than 10 by 10, but I'm gonna make it about 20 by 20 to actually be able to model the street, the curbing, the grass, the footpath, and everything that we see as well. So what I did there is go down to this mesh tool here on the right hand, on the left hand side of the panel, click on mesh, click once and drag up a secondary time. I haven't clicked, but what I can do is press the tab button, which will let us change the dimensions manually. So I'm gonna type in 20,000, press tab again, and then type in 20,000 once more. So now we have our foundations of our overall site that we're gonna be playing with. I don't wanna really have to worry about the corners of the street and everything, so I'm actually gonna just utilize the inside of this site. 
By holding Alt, I can activate my eyedropper tool, which lets me replicate the settings of anything that I click on. So I'm gonna once again click on that mesh tool and simply create a 10 by 10 square by repeating the same steps we talked about. I'm gonna click on this internal square once, press Control D and select the bottom node. I'm gonna move it to one corner, press Control D again, click on the top node, move it to the opposite side. So 14,142, if we half that, that's about 7,071. So I'm just gonna type in 7,071 on a 45 degree angle, centers that almost perfectly in the center of that shape. Now this shape we've created here is gonna be our main foundation of the building. And we're gonna slowly work our way in towards that. If you're not really concerned about any of the site context and layout and how we're gonna create that, you can skip ahead in the timeline, you know, somewhere down there. I will put the markers in so you can jump ahead. But we're gonna focus on our road, we're gonna focus on our curb and our landscaping just quickly before we move into that section. So roads are anywhere from six to 12 to 18 meters wide, depending on the roads themselves. This one's probably not much wider than six meters. So what I'm gonna do is click on one of the outskirts of these perimeters, click on it once, click on offset all edges. I don't want offset edge, I want offset all edges. And then I'm gonna tap the control key again. Now you can see that we're offsetting more and more and more as we move in and we only have five meters to our building that we're planning on designing. We probably need three meters for the landscaping and garden, etc. If not more, we can call it five. So instead of going inwards, I'm actually gonna go outwards six meters. So now we have an even larger square than we traditionally started with. If I click M to open up my measure tool, I can click once to just double check that is six meters and Click again to keep measuring in different directions, but we don't need to, so escape key will get you out of that one. If I open up the settings of this mesh section here, I can see that this is created as grass. I don't want that to be grass. Let's just change that to concrete. So if you type in C-O-N, it'll quickly jump to some sort of concrete material. We'll go concrete light 23 for the purposes of this, and I'll make it all concrete light and override all settings by linking it together. So we click OK, that's completed. I can now go ahead and start messing with the curbing and the grass itself. So if we do the same thing and open up the settings, we can come up to the dialog box or we can click Control T to open up those settings for that internal square, which we're gonna be using as our grass. It's already annotated as grass, but what I wanna do is change the edging of it to concrete as well. So I'm gonna go into this and change it to a different sort of concrete. I'm just gonna click Concrete 2. That'll make sense in twin motion when we get there because it's all about material color matching. I'm also gonna increase this by 100 millimeters to create that curbing there itself. It's a generic way to create a curb. We can go and model that in a lot more detail, but it looks like it's just a simple square flush curb. So we're just clicking OK, and we've created partial areas of our site. If I go show in 3D in this tab up here, we'll see that we've started to create our site. So we have our road, we have our very simple, very, very simple curbing along the edge, and we have our grass on top. Now, if I go back into this ground floor plan and look at this curbing that we've created, comparing it to what we have in 3D, it's not very realistic. We don't really have any depth to it. So what I wanna do is actually click on one of the edges, offset all edges, control, and I'm gonna go about 150 mil. So you'll see we've created a secondary mesh inside. I wanna click on the outside one, click on any of the corners, select my minus, hold space, and then click once more. So now I'm gonna open up the settings again by clicking Control T and change this all to concrete too. So now I have a curb in full 3D. So if we come back to our 3D, you'll see that we actually have a full curb rather than what we were having before. So now we're slowly getting to understand our context and slowly starting to create our shapes that we need. If I come back to my ground floor plan, I know we're walking into the building about here. So what I'm gonna do is select the grassed area that we've created, click again on one of those corners and click on the interior square. Now that basically just chops out the middle of the building as much as we can very quickly by holding space and clicking on that shape. And now I'm gonna continue creating the rest of the environment. So we have a little footpath coming in here. 
So if I click on one of these corners again, oh, get the subtract tool, come up to the top and use a rectangle geometry. I can create a footpath of approximately three meters. I believe that would be more than enough. And then what I can do is select our curbing, come across to our axe tool, split. It is also the control and forward slash key if you want a shortcut for it. But all we have to do is click on that little axe and click on that line there, holding shift to make sure we aren't locking and moving in any direction except perfectly perpendicular down and clicking in the direction we want to keep our selection. So if I click cut, you'll see it's cut all the way through that ax, which is fine because I'm not really worried about the back end of this building. As we have this highlighted, I want to click again on one of these edges and then I want to select the single offset edge tool and just drag that back to the start of the footpath. I want to also do the same thing on both sides here to create a curb wrapping back into this building. So what I'm going to simply do is click the plus sign instead of the minus sign this time and move it up, press tab, go 150, gives us our new curbing, do the same on this side going all the way up, 150, and if we check out our 3D, there it is over this side, we've started to model our curbing, we've started to model our footpath. Now it looks like this section of the footpath is a little bit higher than the actual road level, so what we can do is simply click on one of these edges, click the subtract tool and draw a square over that. We can then hold alt and highlight our footpath that we used before, holding space and clicking again, we can rapidly create a new section. So I can increase that by opening control T, going just 50 mil for the time being and lifting that 50 mil off the ground. Now you see this is flickering constantly and it's really annoying for this very simple fact that we have multiple elements overlaid. So if we come back into our ground floor plan, click on the overall square, you'll see that it's overlaying and falling and failing because of this. So we can simply click the edge, hold space and get rid of that secondary one. So now we don't have anything overlapping for our main building shape. If I click on this mesh, click Control T again, highlight all of those override surface models and change that to let's say concrete 10 in this instance. And I also wanna lift it up 600 millimeters because that's gonna be the basis of our design. Clicking OK, we're starting to see it all come together. So there's only a couple elements left to this design. I think there's a small footpath wrapping around the building and another footpath wrapping to the right. And then we have our garden kind of pond planter on the right hand side as well. So before we start going into our actual building, I'm gonna quickly finish off the edge of this context here. So if we were to say we have a footpath that wraps around the entire building, what we'll do is actually select our curbing as best as we can. Tricky, if you can never select the right one that you're looking for, just hover over what you're looking for and tab your way through it. So tab will allow you to select different elements quickly. We're gonna select the edge move that back one meter, and then we're gonna click one of the edges, select the additional tool, hold, shift, run in line with the edge of our building context, and tab down twice to this 1000 meter. Instead of going upwards, we actually wanna go in the opposite direction, so we can actually type minus 150, which creates our curbing internally. We also wanna extend this an additional meter, and then repeat the same process on this side here. So there we have it, minus 150. We've created a new curb that wraps all the way around. We can then quickly click on some of these edges here, drag out the mesh that we've created, click on the new mesh, and if we click the simple geometric method, we can click a few times to create our footpath on the left-hand side. If you do make a mistake like that, you can click backspace to come out of it and then double click to finish no matter where you are in the project. If we come back to our show all in 3D, we can see we've created that recessed footpath with the curbing wrapping around and all we have to do is create the same effect on the right-hand side. So the same process, very simple, select the curb, drag one meter down, click one of the nodes, make sure the plus is selected, make sure the rectangular geometry is selected, drag it all the way across and tab 150. Now we have to do is remove this section of the grass 
and increase this section of the footpath by repeating the same processes we did a moment ago. Now coming back into 3D, you'll see that we've created that new footpath. We have some of our grass overlapping our curb and hence the flickering. We can edit this in 3D if we like, so just simply clicking that, coming over to our offset edge and retracting it across and we've created our new path going that way. I would assume there'd be some sort of curbing on this side as well because we have some sort of pond. So what I'll do is again, click on a node, make sure that plus sign is selected, come across here, let's go 150 and I'm going to cut this section again and drag that offsetting it back 150. So what we've done is actually split this mesh from this mesh. So if I open up the settings by clicking Command T, highlighting all of these override surfaces and typing in water, I can make it water wavy pond. And now we have some sort of pond on the right hand side. I'm gonna use the same footpath to create the foundation of this tree in the center of this uh, pond over here. So I'll just hold the Alt key, select that and draw a one meter by one meter square. It wouldn't be a meter by a meter in this image, but I think that is a more realistic plan to size. And then what I'll do is very similar to how we started the project, clicking on offset all edges, clicking the control key and going 150, and then selecting our outside box, going the minus, holding space, clicking again, to be able to create some sort of curbing inside. Now I'm holding shift and the scroll wheel of the mouse to be able to fly a little bit more freely. I'm gonna open up the settings of those two and lift that to about 200. Now we don't need the center one whatsoever, but for visual effects, we'll go back here. We'll change that to earth brown and we'll also click control D to lower that by 50 millimeters. So our tree can sit in that planter in the middle of the pond there. So now the overall context of the actual site is completed. It would be a car wrapping around here on the left hand side. This would be a lot narrower than we've, what we've actually created. So we can cut that back in if we want to, but we don't really have to. And we'd have some sort of landscaping on the, the right hand side as well. However, that's the general context completed, which means we can move on to the building elements themselves. Now the building elements themselves seem relatively simple, but there's some complex tricks in here that I wanted to teach you guys today. And that's why out of all the images, I selected this one. So if we come back into our ground floor plan, we're gonna be utilizing this space here in the center as our building foundation. We can see that the main concrete wall on the right hand side, which is rendered pure white, is quite thick and quite large. I'd call that almost a 500 mil thick wall, which could be a series of different walls wrapped around, made out of timber, made out of concrete, could be constructed in a magnitude of different ways. But let's envision that it's potentially just one solid 500 mil concrete wall. Now to create that, there's a number of ways we can do it the easy way, clicking on wall tool, clicking on a wall, and then changing the structure to a basic composition and changing it to 500 millimeters, or we can do it the more complex way. Now I haven't shown you this on my channel yet, so I wanted to show you the more complex way. The harder way is to go into composites, open up your composites panel, and it will open up all the different wall types that ArchiCAD has available to you right now. It doesn't really matter what one we select for the purpose of this, but I'm just gonna select a concrete suspended, oh, 250 mil suspended concrete plus timber finish, and then I'm gonna click new. It's gonna open up a secondary dialog box and I'm gonna call it 500 millimeter concrete and click okay. Now it's, divided into different skins, different colors, and different details, depending on how you actually document. But for the purposes of this wall and this construction, we really need it to be a very simple concrete wall. So we're gonna remove the skin of the timber layer, we're gonna remove the skin of the gyp rock, and we're gonna change that to 500 millimeters. Now before we click OK, we have to make sure that we have our wall selected and deselect our floor. We don't want that as a floor composite, we want it as a wall composite. And now we can click OK and actually find it in our basic wall structure. So it will be one of the first ones most likely because the rest are actually lettered and our first one started with a number. So 500 millimeter concrete wall. If we start drawing that, we can see it's a very thick, very chunky wall, but that's exactly what we wanted. So we have our first concrete mass wall here 
and we have our secondary concrete mass wall here which actually looks like it comes through that footpath and makes that footpath completely redundant and a waste of time of drawing but hey we're replicating somebody else's design and that's all part of the experience right so now we've drawn our two blade concrete walls and if we come back into 3d we'll see they're absolutely gigantic which is perfect because that's what we want i want to offset this edge here back in line with this concrete wall so we don't have that flickering effect and i'm going to change the materiality of these so if i come into this wall Control t to open up the settings i'm going to overwrite all the layers and i'm just going to pick stratco rough white it doesn't really matter it's just going to be a white concrete panel and i'm going to open up the settings of this section of the wall too do the exact same and find a different concrete material now we've used concrete light 23 for the road but hopefully it should be okay to use for this one as well if not we'll come in later and change it again in twin motion so now we have those two massive blade walls coming out that are striking and really really nice but we need some stairs to get up that there's a number of ways we can create our stairs we can click on this and we can remove about 600 mil of that so 600 millimeters of that removed maybe let's even go to 900 millimeters because there's three steps and then what we're going to do is create three large concrete steps so i'm going to hold alt clicking on that and pressing once with my square selected tab 300 millimeters creating my first step i'm going to click on that Control d click on one corner plus with Control, and then repeat that step to get our third step so now if we open up our 3D, nothing's really changed, but you'll see that if we click quickly, we'll see three different steps. Now what I didn't realize is the third step is actually the foundation. So we can delete that third step, click on the edge, extend that back 300 millimeters, select both of these steps by holding the shift key, pressing control D and moving that first one down 200 millimeters and moving that second one down by repeating that same step another 200 millimeters and there we have it we have our three steps created but we have flickering here so i'm going to select that main slab click on our axe tool and split that slab entirely so i can drag that across in line with that new wall that we've created so that flickering ceases and desists so it appears like this section here is more so little square tiles so again what i'll do is open up pick some tiles, click OK, and deal with that in a materiality section in twin motion. Coming back into our ground floor plan, we notice that there is a very large opening on this right hand side. So you can use the opening tool, but I prefer to use the wall opening. So if I go into door, click on the door settings and type in simple, it'll open up the simple door opening object. And I wanna create that as three meters tall and potentially I'm unsure of the width for now. So I'm gonna leave that as off. I'm gonna select one side over here. It falls in line with that back wall that runs along the whole way and then wraps up the top. So I'll run that all the way to the edge of that wall and I'll extend that by clicking one of these nodes, making sure I move node and I'll probably align it with the edge of that for simply the fact that it's some sort of indicator in this project. Now if we come back into 3D, We'll see it's opened up, it's broken that section and it looks really nice, but it isn't three meters from the top of this wall, it's three meters from the bottom of the ground. So to make sure that this is actually sitting on top of this, I'm just gonna select the corner anywhere that I know a corner is, click Control D and then move that up in the project by holding Shift and clicking in line with the edge of the slab we've created. So now we have this beautiful slab here we have the opening on the side and we can start creating our back wall. It looks like the back wall is the same material as this wall. So what I'll do is hold the Alt key to create, to replicate that one. And I will run one massive wall from here to here. I'll stop there and then I'll start a secondary wall here because they're two different heights. Now this wall does actually run underneath it. So what I'll do is click Control D to be able to move that wall under that wall that we just drew that opening for. 
So coming back into our 3D, we'll see our new wall has been constructed. I can click on this secondary wall that we made, clicking on one of the nodes and moving to stretch height, coming to the bottom and lining that underneath just like we see in the picture. From that angle that we have replicated in the photo, it would be something similar to this where I don't actually unfortunately see what's happening above or over here, but I'm just gonna assume that there's nothing here because we can't see it. We're just focusing on the front of the building itself. Now, the rest of this project is actually relatively simple. It's mainly walls, it's mainly PFCs, and it's a repetition of timber. We'll get our UAP Beam 24. Now, I usually call this a PFC, which is a parallel flange channel, but that's what the standard is in ARCHICAD 24, so we're just gonna go with it for now. We'll probably need a much larger beam on the bottom and the top, like it's replicated in this image, but all they give us is 300. We can actually define a custom size and change these bits and pieces around if we want to. So I think that's probably a lot bigger. It's probably about 500, which will make that about 150 with a 12 mil actual thickness, and the rest of the items don't actually matter too much. So I'll change the object as well because objects are quite important. So if we come into beams, beams exterior and click OK, we can start by creating our first beam. That beam appear, appears to wrap in line with the edge of the concrete slab. So what I'll do is click Control D on one of the nodes, move it to the end, clicking on the center node now to be able to drag it all the way across. Now, because I do want it to match at a perfect 45 degree angle, I'll click one of these nodes hold the shift key, wrap that back to 45 degrees, do the same for that section, and then reselect the center node so I can move it back. I'm gonna move it back a little bit too far so I can perfectly align it with the edge here. Now the simplest way without having to recreate that 45 degrees and worrying about is it perfect or not, if we hold Control and press M, we will get our mirror tool, and then we can click our Control button again to get the plus sign. So clicking on one node and then realigning it to the second node rapidly creates our secondary PFC. I can click on that once more to extend it to the end. So now if I just quickly check that these are about one meter off the ground so we can see them, clicking OK, going back into our 3D, we'll now see our big beams right here on the ring. Because they are black PFCs in this image, clicking OK, we've created our first PFC. I'm gonna then click Control D, clicking Control again to duplicate it, holding the sh uh, Shift key to move it in a vertical direction, and I'm gonna move that 4,200 millimeters. So that gives us a little bit off the top for our structural integrity, and I'm gonna create one more, dropping it in the middle, so 2,100, and then I'm gonna change it to EN standards and I'm just gonna make it a 100 beam. And then I'm gonna lift it another 500 millimeters because it isn't perfectly in the center in this image on the left that we're using as inspiration. Okay, so now we've got our PFCs created. We've got most of our buildings modeled. We just need that timber screening to happen. So if we come back into our ground floor plan, go to our column tool, open the column settings, we can start replicating our columns. I think the timber battens in this case would be unequal. They would be about 50 millimeters wide and they would potentially be about 75 millimeters deep. So I'll change that to 75 deep, 50 mil wide, and I'll also override to some sort of timber material. Now the structure for the purposes of this isn't too important, but if we did want to change it, we'd change it to some sort of timber. So it would just be timber stud or actually it'll be a timber batten. It's nothing important, it's non-structural, and we click OK. Coming down to the edge, I wanna select my very first one, and I'm gonna place that right against, hard against this concrete, and then drag it 50 millimeters across. I don't like the crosshairs in this, so I'm gonna open up the settings again by clicking Control T, go to the floor plan, and then scroll down to floor plan symbol, crosshairs, I'm just gonna change it to plain, so we don't have a million crosshairs. Now, so we don't have to go through and create these one by one. We can simply click on one of these nodes, go multiply, go to our spread, input the spacing of 100, click OK, click on one of the nodes, and drag it all the way across till we reach the end. Now, it looks like we aren't reaching the end perfectly. It's a bit of an odd spacing, so I'm gonna click here. Without clicking anything, I'm gonna go back to the original one, holding Shift, click on it again, and then I'm gonna click Control G. 
that simply groups them all together so we don't have to go back and click them one by one. Now I've got approximately 50 mil on this side, 50 mil on the other side, which I think is more than acceptable in this case. I'm gonna click Alt G to ungroup the selection, click Control D and then Control again to duplicate one more to the edge. I'm gonna click Control E to open up the protractor tool and rotate it 90 degrees around the edge of this PFC. And then once more, Control D moving it across. So just like we replicated these, we're gonna do the same thing going into our multiply settings, clicking OK and dragging it all the way to the edge of this PFC. So as you can see, another one ends at 50 mil. So we'll just click it there, go all the way back to our first original, click it, Control G and group. Okay, so now we can take a look in 3D to see how far we've come along and we've created something that's looking quite similar. However, we need to increase the height of these to stop just in line with the edge of this slab instead of going all the way to the ground. So by clicking on one, we'll see we aren't grouped anymore. So Alt G reactivates our grouping, clicking on that one again. We'll have to ungroup this to be able to do our next step. So Alt G once more, selecting the bottom and then clicking our stretch height again. If we drag that up to the edge of the bottom of that slab, that's five two in the purposes of this. And it's also going six meters, but it looks like it stops perfectly in line with the edge of the top of the PFC. So I'm gonna click on one of the top again and change the height down in line with the PFC. So there we go, it's automatically changed all of them. We don't have to go through one by one. It's giving us that feature timber screen through to that timber and we're starting to basically see our finished product. If we also come into our ground floor plan, the last thing we wanna change is clicking on this center square here, clicking one of the nodes, going minus and introducing some sort of earth texture there. So I'll cut out a big square, I'll hold Alt, I'll hold space and click once more. Go back into our 3D, we'll see that I've created a big earth patch. So I'm gonna click on that earth, Control D, drag it up to the top, Control D, back down 50 millimeters for that nice giant tree. Now, if you can't tell already, I'm a little bit sick, I'm a little bit under the weather, but I promise you guys a video every Monday, so I'd truly appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel for the simple fact that I'm very committed. And there we have it guys, that is basically the construction that we can see in front of us in this example image. It is basically to the best of our ability without seeing more of these images. So what we're actually gonna do now is go Twin Motion 2022 or Twin Motion 2020 direct link and let that load. We have a few little things going on, nothing too major. My settings are on ultra low, so if I go into preferences, quality, we'll go back up to high just so we have a bit more information to play with and understand. And then we're gonna start manipulating this actual environment. So if we come down to the bottom and go into settings, we're gonna to go to local location first and we're gonna change our location to Perth because that's where I am at the moment. Now, winter always provides some really nice shadows, but it looks like this is more of a nighttime render in the opposite direction. So if we change our north point to somewhere on the right-hand side of the page, we can see most of our shadows probably from the moon over on that side. So we're actually gonna reduce this down to probably nine o'clock at nighttime so we can start seeing some of our nighttime renders come through we're going to adjust but so there it is if i zoom back out a little bit and look up the moon is just there it's definitely too high but that's okay we don't really need to see it too much it doesn't matter how much i drop these months it's not going to drop any lower in the sky unfortunately so that's roughly where we have our project at the moment it's a nighttime render we're going to change the background to just some sort of countryside it doesn't matter we're going to fill it with trees and then if we go back into our settings we can change our weather there's no clouds in the sky there's just a couple of little stars which is really nice we don't have to change any of that that's more than likely exactly what we want to see so we're going to start by introducing some lighting into this project going lights going neon light and clicking along the bottom here, which is what we see. So if I click on that, I'm gonna reduce that to about 10, and I'm gonna reduce that to about five, six, six and a half meters, roughly. Clicking tab, I can extend that to where I need it to go exactly, and position my neon light there. So we have one neon light on that side. I'm gonna hold shift and drag one of these to create a copy. I want an instance because I want it to be exactly the same. Rotate that 90 degrees, 
and then position that on this side of the building as well. So we have our neon lights underneath there. We need our three little spotlights on this side. So if I create a little spotlight here, rotate that 90 degrees and reduce the intensity to 10. We can see we have one little spotlight here, two more on this side. So one copy here, drag that, oops, drag that to where it needs to be. One more copy at the end. Okay, I'm gonna select all three of these, drag them across the other side, click okay and rotate them 180 degrees so they face the other way. It looks like we have a lot of up lighting in here on this project here. So let's start by going back and introducing a large tree in this area so we can actually focus our lighting on it. I think maybe a Japanese walnut would look nice in this render. So that's quite large, quite similar to what we have in the actual inspiration image. And then we're gonna go back into our lighting and start introducing some more spotlights around the tree. So clicking one, rotating that 90 degrees, rotating that another 45 degrees, and then angling it towards our tree and reducing the intensity to about 20 in this situation. I'm gonna replicate a few more of those around the tree by just quickly holding shift and dragging across. So creating an instance, going okay, drag that this way so it points at the tree and I'll do the same for these two on the other side. So now we have our tree illuminated. It looks like the back wall has a little bit of ivy growing onto it as well. So if we come into vegetation, we go into miscellaneous, clicking on falling ivy, clicking sporadically a few times, changing the ivy to make sure we get different patterns, different textures, so it doesn't look like one very large blob, and then introducing another light into that back source. It does look like that light is a bit more of a directional light than anything else, but I'll put one more spotlight at that there. So if I change that to 20 and I increase the angle of the light that it throws, I might have to increase that to about 50 and drag it back a little bit so it throws it more at the wall. There we go. Now we have our light source on that back wall. If we come back out, we can see we have our tree illuminated. We have our shrubs illuminate in the background we are missing the one illuminating led neon light here so if i create another strip light rotate that 90 degrees and repeat a very similar process we did to the bottom of the building dropping the intensity down to about 10 and reducing that length to about five i can position it perfectly and we have an led strip light on that section so if we continue to find our project center, which is replicating this image here, it is quite similar to that location there, but we have to introduce a lot more texture. So if we go back into our material, we can use this mega scenes library. So if I go into surfaces, concrete, cast in situ, download this cast in situ concrete and apply it to the left blade wall, we'll see that it quickly creates a in situ concrete wall, which probably needs to be either larger or smaller. It's quite hard to tell because it's so dark. If we leave it at one, I'm gonna download this shutter concrete wall and attempt this texture on this left blade wall. So if I use it on this left blade wall, it's also gonna use it on the road, unfortunately, but that's okay, because the road isn't that important in this project. Fly around to see what the texture is. That's probably about right. I'm gonna go more, rotate the texture 90 degrees and I'm gonna scale that up to about two, maybe four. Four is probably an appropriate size. Back all the way, go to materials, go to concrete, and I'm just gonna make that a base concrete texture. So it is nice, white, pure, and crisp. I'm also gonna quickly attempt this concrete slabs on this side because it looks a little bit lighter and a little bit grayer, so I'm gonna increase that two. I don't like that at all. So let's undo that by clicking Control Z and coming back to our original image. Now this image is still way too dark because it is nighttime obviously. So I'm gonna go into settings. I'm gonna go into lighting and I'm gonna start playing around with these settings to make it a little bit nicer. If I increase the exposure to 0.5 and go to the individual settings, I can increase the star intensity to make the stars twinkle a little bit more and I can also increase the moon intensity. So if we bring the moon intensity up to two and increase the ambient up to one, 
we can begin to see our image a little bit better. I think this final image will have to be imported into Lightroom. I'll show you exactly how to do that at the end of this tutorial to really get the most out of this image. But now if we go back into our vegetation, create some trees, let's pick the Japanese white lart and I'm just gonna zoom all the way up to the top and click quickly around the perimeter of our project to create some Japanese larch trees around. I'm also gonna throw in some Japanese walnuts at the front to create some diversity in the texture and then fly back down to the bottom to start modeling our grass. If I click into the context, go vegetation paint, come back up to the top, go brushes, go flowers and grass, click lawn and drag the lawn down the bottom. I can increase my density to 100% I can click on my brush and decrease that to one because it is a very small area and then slowly paint all of this in. So if I click and hold and start creating some grass, you'll see that I'm creating a much nicer grass texture here than what's there originally. I'll quickly paint this all in and jump back to you guys at the end. Okay, so now I've painted in all my grass. As you can see, it's coming out the edges and it'll show up in the actual render a lot better. Finally, we wanna insert our water here. So if we come back into our materials, scroll all the way down to water and we can insert some sort of a pond. Maybe pool two in this instance is probably the nicest. I'll increase the color to a little bit lighter and I'll also introduce a small tree on this island here. So I'll select the English U for the simple fact that it is one of the most intricate trees as a small tree. So I'll reduce that all the way to the smallest, even though that would definitely not be the tree that would be there considering the size it grows to. And then zoom back out to find our overall design. The last thing that we have to introduce now is a car into the project. So simply going into vehicles, cars, it seems like some sort of hatchback. So we will select a hatchback that one looks good rotate 90 degrees 180 and change the color to white now if we come across to our media click image we can create our first image and we can try and actually find the correct positioning for it now if we go into more we can also adjust the camera settings if we want it a little bit wider if we want it a bit more close up it's completely up to us 74 is usually the frame i like because it gives you that most realistic feel. And then I'm just gonna play around with it till I see what I wanna see. I think I like that image the most, so I'm gonna refresh that. I'm gonna go into more, I'm gonna go into format, and I'm gonna change this format to custom. So what the custom output actually needs to be, I want that to be 2000 by 2500, which is more of an Instagram format, which is what we've got going on here. Now, if we go back into our format and our image, we're starting to see that moon in the background. We're starting to see a little bit more of what we originally planned, but the camera settings are a little bit wrong. So what we're gonna do is zoom into about a 50 mil prime lens and take that depth of field off. And because we have to zoom out further, I'm actually gonna manipulate the inbuilt mesh of twin motion to be able to zoom out as far as I need to, to be able to best create this image here. So I think that is probably best image we need to create. And finally, I'm gonna insert one human on the right hand side walking up the stairs. It can be a cutout, it can be a posed human, it can be absolutely anything. I like the posed humans because they seem a little bit more realistic at the end of the day when you export something. So I'll put this lady in with her shopping bags and come back to our image here. And there we go, we have our final image ready to export. Now all we have to do is actually extend that to full screen, go to the export button, go to image, select one and click the export button. Okay, so now we have our image open in Adobe Lightroom and I'm just gonna simply apply one of my presets. They are available download in the link description if you wanna check them out. So if we scroll through them, we can see a different variation of styles and, and color qualities in this image here. I think for this one personally, something like a spring external would work quite well, but just adjusting a few more of these sliders. So increasing a few extra elements to be able to create more sense in the actual building here, lowering the black so we see a little bit more and just painting out that road ever so slightly. So 
we don't actually see the road and our eyes are focused on the building. And there we have it, that is the completed image, the completed render from start to finish using an image that we found as inspiration and creating something from absolutely nothing. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So thank you for being a part of this community. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.